I believe I'm worth it. This is a story about my journey of reclaiming my self-worth. I was born here in the United States, but I grew up in Costa Rica. My father traveled a lot for work and he'd leave us behind. I remember missing him so much whenever he was gone. I'd always count the days until he'd be back. Every time he left, I'd take advantage and sleep in the master bedroom with my mom so that I could keep her company. March 20th, 1996, I was seven years old. And he had left us again. What I didn't know that night sleeping with my mom was that it would be like any, it wouldn't be like any other night. And I would wake up the next morning with an unexpected surprise. I woke up startled as I heard my mom screaming. She was screaming in terror, stomping her feet on the ground. All I could do was hide under the covers. I didn't understand what was going on. As I peeked from underneath the covers, she lifted my dead baby sister from the crib. Her face was blue from suffocation. As my mom kept screaming and pounding her feet, the hired help run into the room. All I remember is hearing an ambulance pull up and I didn't see my mom again. My nanny picked out my school uniform and got me dressed for school and sent me off with the driver. I was so confused. I didn't realize what was going on. And the reality was, is that the day that my sister died, my whole family died. I remember getting to school and my, my first grade teacher pulling me aside giving me a hug and telling me how sorry she was for our loss. And I just remember crying in her arms. I was so confused. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. And I found a different way to cope. I don't remember ever crying again. I remember turning to food. I just ate and stuffed all of my emotions. I didn't want to feel. I don't remember my mom ever letting me know what was going on. My dad arrived two days later, right before the funeral. And it was all just a blur and I just kept eating and stuffing and eating and stuffing. I gained a lot of weight and was the biggest girl in my class. I began to get bullied by my peers. I was rejected because of what I looked like. By the time I was 11, I had been experiencing these chronic stomach pains. And so I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with three ulcers. And I remember them asking my parents, what's going on in your home that's creating such emotional turmoil in this child? that she's experiencing this at such a young age. They blamed their separation, but it was more than just their separation. And it was more than just the bullying at school. I was in fear. I went to sleep every night in fear, fear of waking up to screams, fear of being alone, fearing of sleeping alone, fearing, fearing any terror that might come un unsuspected and I continued to eat. Once I was diagnosed with the ulcers, I used them to my advantage. I used to tell my mom that I was in pain so that she would spend the night with me and she'd keep me company. Having been rejected amongst my peers, I quickly learned as well that I could make friends if, if I had fun pizza parties at home and I had fun spend the night parties at home. And so I started to 
make friends again because of what I could give them and what I could provide to them. I had the fun house where my parents didn't really care what we did and everyone would come over and we'd break all the rules and it was fun. I remember walking into school in the ninth grade and my best friend comes up to me and tells me that all the other girls were invited to a party, but I wasn't invited because of what I looked like, because I was an embarrassment, because I was fat. And I remember feeling so rejected, so unworthy. I felt like I wasn't enough. Taking matters into my own hands, I purposely started to fail the ninth grade. I didn't want to be there anymore. I just continued to eat. I just continued to isolate. And I knew that if I failed, my parents would send me off to boarding school. And that's exactly what I did. I was shipped off to boarding school and handed off to my house mothers. I was far away from my family. I was far away from Costa Rica. And this was my opportunity to be who I wanted to be. I developed an eating disorder, lost 30 pounds, excelled in my academics. The more I excelled, the more weight I lost, the more praise I got. The more everyone noticed me, the more attention I got which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted everyone's attention. I wanted everyone to tell me that I was beautiful, that I was worthy, that I wasn't that fat little girl. The reality was though, is that no one liked me. They still didn't like me because now I was the girl that couldn't get anything less than an A on her test and the girl that couldn't miss a day at the gym. I could never win. My senior year of high school, I was invited to a party and I had my first drink. I felt like I was no longer that rigid girl. I was no longer the girl that no one wanted to be around. I was carefree. I was fun. I felt so beautiful. And I just kept drinking, chasing those feelings, those sensations that the alcohol brought me. Needless to say, I ended up blacking out, cheating on my boyfriend and vomiting the whole next day. And that's the perfect depiction of my drinking career. I kept drinking, falling into the same habits, the same behaviors. In 2007, I moved here to Miami. I came here for college. And I keep seeking everyone's approval with this same method, drinking into oblivion, giving my body away, and waking up with moral remorse the next day. I just wanted to be loved. I just wanted to be worthy. I just wanted to be seen. <clears throat> At the end of my senior year in college, I finally met my match. I met someone that liked to party like I did, drink like I do. We had a blast until we didn't. The more we drank, the more destructive our relationship became. It became emotionally and physically abusive. And the more he abused me, the more he hurt me internally and externally, the more he showered me with gifts as a way to compensate for his behavior. And I took it. I put my worth in what he could give me and the extravagant lifestyle that we lived. And every time I tried to leave him, he'd tell me that I would never find anyone that would put up with me, that I would never find anyone that would provide for me the way he provides for me, and that I would never amount to anything on my own without him. And I believed it. I left that relationship. 
But I continued to stumble into the same relationship with a different face. I continued I continue to seek these men that would abuse me and that I would find some sort of false sense of financial security in. For some reason, I believed that I had worth when I was next to some of these men. I didn't believe that I could stand on my own. May 2017, I was invited to church by a friend of mine. I remember walking into that community and seeing a light within everyone that I knew I didn't have. I was hung over from the night before. I'd taken a bunch of Adderall to even get up, but I could sense their presence. I could sense their peace. And all I could feel was the emotional unrest within my own self. I continued going back. I continued emerging myself in this community. And it really reflected to me what a double life I was living. Not everyone was doing what I was doing. Not everyone was down this dark path the way that I was. And why was I doing all these things to myself? Why did I think that I would find my worth in fleeting things, in people, in my surroundings? A year later, I was invited into a 12-step recovery program. And I've been on that journey ever since. It's not perfect. I don't feel worthy every day, but that's okay because I'm learning about who I am, why I am the way I am. And most importantly, I'm finding a purpose behind my story and behind my experiences. Today, I find my worth in God. And that's such a gift. It's a gift that I get to give back to other women. I get to uplift other women. I get to lead by example. And there's nothing more precious than that because today I believe I'm worth it. Thank you.